Where I know him from is from the game of volleyball. I have loved coaching. It has given me so much. It has really demanded the best of me. So uh, hats off to you guys to be in this room to learn how to be better coaches, to get intentional about doing that. Uh, it's going to serve the teams that you work with. So thank you for doing that. Um, I have spent the last year uh, training in leadership and in performance leadership coaching. Such an exciting new journey in my life. I have seen its effects in my own life. I believe in what I'm doing here, so I really hope we can share our passion with you today. Mm -hmm. So we'll touch on what life coaching is for those of you who are not in the know. And so what coaching is, it's really about discovery and awareness and choice. And so what a coach will bring to the conversation is their listening skills. And let's face it, we're living in a world where people want to be heard. You know, and so a coach listens. And then they bring their curiosity and their intuition and they allow that client to really dive deep and find out what their passions are. What are their beliefs? What are their values? And where do they want to take them? And it's all in a safe environment. And if you add all of that together, you get a little bit of magic. A little bit of magic. <laughs> we love magic. Totally love magic. <coughs> and we're hoping for magic today. So what we're going to present to you, we have called coaching to the bigger picture. Because we believe, and if you're here, I think you believe it too, that as volleyball coaches, you are developing athletes. But above and beyond that, you are mentoring and feeding into the lives of young people. So we want to give you tools that are going to help you uh, give your athletes some understanding of how they're viewing their game, how they can approach their game, how they can approach the pressure that they're under. And then we want the kids to grab a hold of those skills and be able to apply them outside of the gym in different ways. So we're going to be interactive here today with the tools that we're introducing to you. So we have taped out this wheel. We've handed out handouts with that wheel on it. We're a little short. Um, my, my oversight, I'm owning that one. <laughs> She's not even going to pretend it's her fault. <laughs> so um, feel free to move around and make yourself comfortable so that you can see and engage in what, you're, in what we're doing. <laughs> Uh, the handouts we just left on the table, so what, what is going to be on the wheel on the handout is what we're going to put out on the floor. Uh, so yeah, be responsible for yourself, take a front seat if you need it, sit on the floor, move to the side, whatever you got to do. Okay. So um, what we're going to ask from you guys, other than taking care of yourselves, is, you know, we just want to bring you present and to the room. It's Friday. It's the end of the week, so kind of just give your shoulders a little roll. Come on, people. I don't see many shoulders. I'm kind of lonely. I'm lonely up there. Yes. Take a deep breath. Let it all go away. Bring yourself into the room. Okay, so one tool that we're going to talk about is boundaries. So I'm going to set two boundaries for you guys. The first boundary is nobody gets to be right and nobody gets to be wrong. So that means everything goes. There are no right answers and there are no right an or wrong answers. So just share what you're thinking, what you're feeling in that moment. There's no gold stars at the end. And boundary number two is have fun, play with us. This can actually be a really good time, but we have to participate, okay? All right. I'm ready to go. Okay. Let's launch it. Let's launch. Okay. First tool we call the perspective wheel. So perspective is how you choose to look at something. Um, it, would you help us out for one second? Just stand. If you would stand in between Leanne and I. So Leanne and I are. Why don't you just face Leanne? Leanne and I are looking at the same thing. That's our topic. But we have different perspectives. If you asked us to describe what we're seeing, 
we would be seeing different things. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong, we're just seeing different things. So when we talk about perspectives, we just want to help you and we want to help your kids find some language that they can identify how they're viewing things and then they can make a shift. They can choose something new and something different. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do that using a wheel so we can really get a visual of how we can shift that perspective. So we're going to put our topic in the middle of the wheel. That's what we're going to be looking at. For the, for the purposes of, of today, we're going to choose competition as our topic. Really relevant um, to the kids you're going to be coaching. And uh, really helpful for them to get some insight onto what they're feeling and experiencing as they step into competition. That's our topic. We have around our topic these wedges, like a pie. We're going to call, we're going to name each wedge. A with a different phrase. Those phrases, um, there is no, there is nothing locked in here. This is where you can just play. What you're trying to do is create metaphors to help these kids find language that they can explore what's actually already going on inside of them. We're not really teaching them anything, we're just giving them a place to explore. So first one's Gladiator Arena. So Gladiator Arena is just an image that's going to let us play around. One person might see it another way, another person might do something totally different. Cold, rainy day. Again, just, just some images that are going to connect with the imagination, sandbox. We want we want to give something that sparks imagination that we can start to imagine how we feel, uh, what, what it would smell like, what it would taste like, what color it would be, those kind of things so we can explore and play around and help players uh, get a sense of what's actually going on. Take a moment to stop and recognize what's going on within them so that they can get better every time they step into the gym. Okay. Making any connections here? How are we doing? I think we're doing okay. Are we okay? Okay, we got one. Okay, we, we got, got one. one. Yes. One's in the tree. <laughs> okay. So, when I presented this to my team, this is exactly what I did. I taped this exact thing out on the floor. I printed off signs like this, different words I use, and I laid them out on the floor. I explained perspective just like we did right there with players standing in between so they could understand that lens through which they're viewing stuff. And then we hopped on the wheel. So if we could have 10 volunteers, 10. You know what? Let's do an example. Oh, yes. Let's do Excellent an example. Okay. Thank you, Leanne. Yeah. OK. So when I put my players on the team, on the uh, wheel, they just, I let them walk through. And they kind of would just, in each perspective, just try it on. What in the heck could cold, rainy day mean to them? And how can they relate it back to competition? And they would just stand there and get a sense of that. It's kind of like trying on a pair of pants. You know, see how it fits. Go to the next one. Let your imagination play around. Okay. So we let the team slowly move around our wheel, and then eventually they settled. And Leanne, where have you chosen to land there? Sandbox. Sandbox, now why did you choose stand Sandbox? What about Sandbox attracted you? Actually, it was completely random. Totally random, okay. Totally random. <laughs> um, it was just, that's where I wanted to go. Yeah. Okay, so what's Sandbox? Mm -hmm. What does that make you feel like? Um, You know, um, I don't particularly like sand. Okay. I find sand great and kind of dirty. And it gets in your shoes. Okay. So sand is so irritating. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it gets into places it really shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. So let's remember it can mean one thing to one person and something totally else 
to another person. Mm -hmm. Nothing's mm -hmm. right, nothing's wrong. This is just for Leanne and kind of irritating. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me about irritation, sandbox. How does that relate back to conflict? <coughs> so, <coughs> if I have an irritation, if I have something that's in places that shouldn't be, how can I show up? What does it do to you as a competitor? You it distracts me. It's it distracts me. Okay. Distracts me. Yeah. Okay. So I see that's what it's costing you. Mm -hmm. What can it give you? What's a benefit that standing in this sandbox perspective could give you? A little bit irritated. Mm -hmm. But you know, sandboxes are fun because you get to create and build. Oh my gosh, that's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course I don't go there. Um, you get to create and build, and then if you don't like it, you can wipe it all away and build again. So it's a place to play. Yes, yes, play and creativity. Mm -hmm. And how does that tie back to competition then? What will we bring it back? That feels good when you put it towards competition. Because um, it can be playful, it can be creative. Okay, well, how are you stronger when you step into a game and you're playful and you're creative? Uh, well, it gives you freedom to be creative with your hits, with your passes, with whatever. You know, it's, and if you're playful, then your teammates find you fun and your energy is up and you go. Yeah, you would uh, you'd be like a virus. Yeah. Big bad wolf. How could the big bad wolf serve you and make you stronger when we relate it back to competition? Just adversity, overcoming maybe your opponent, maybe you have a preconceived notion of what they are or what they have to offer against you. Overcoming that. 
And that reminds me back of that teamwork that you talked about at the beginning, right? That obstacle and that pressure to bring the team together. Love it. Can you think of anything that is a cost when you're holding this perspective? Just in the sense that you may be Says 
a lot to she to me it it's a one man game. Uh, volleyball is so team. There's so many personalities, so many different strengths and weaknesses that are coming together to make a team. And Serena Williams seems like she is the team. And so I think yeah. on some volleyball teams a lot of people might rely on that one person and it can feel like a lot of pressure, a lot to uh, build up to, a lot to show that you can do all these things when sometimes you do need to fall back on your team and get them to come and help you out a little bit. So I'm hearing the girls <coughs> from this perspective. Yeah. What's the benefit of this perspective? She's an amazing athlete. She works hard for what she's been able to have and I think she's really an inspiration, especially to young girls and young athletes and just work hard, keep at it and you will have that rise. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So is this a perspective you would take into competition? Um yeah, it wouldn't be my first. Okay. But I can see both sides of it. Okay. I think it's a good mindset as Mm -hmm. individual to have. When you're bringing it to a team, you can't be the only one. There has to be some other people on the team that also have that same mindset. Okay, but what's great about this <coughs> is what that means to you doesn't necessarily mean the same thing to me. So someone might find their match and that's what they're going to take into, into it. So not every team is going to have the exact same perspective. And the end goal Um, so then we use this tool in games, right? Time out, we are like dead in the water. In what perspective are you holding right now? How can you shift to find something that's more effective for you and more effective for your team? Uh, simple language helps the kids get exploring what's going on inside. Okay, all right. Okay, who's next? Ten more. Four more. Four more. One more. <laughs> All right, I'm feeling really productive. <laughs> Can you coach me through this? <coughs> okay. All right, so what we wanted to demonstrate is that naming the wedges can actually be a lot of fun for your athletes. We came up with these, but they can pretty much be whatever you want them to be, right? So let's play with this a little bit and name them some perspectives. What is your favorite food? Pizza. Okay, we have pizza. Okay, and your favorite color? Purple, okay. Uh, somebody's favorite season? Summer, okay. Okay, so you see that this is it. And you can actually stand in these wedges and look at purple and find the benefit of purple and the cost of purple for competition. Do you want to do purple? Yeah, why don't you do purple, okay. All right. Okay, Linda. Tell me. Purple competition. How are you feeling? Okay. So purple to me is like really light and fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also, uh, it's kind of like, look at me. Look at me. Mm -hmm. So I can relate that to competition. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're out there and you're doing well, you just want you want the ball. You want the eyes on you. It's fun. What's the cost of purple? Well, what if I'm not doing well? What if the eyes are on me and I'm, I'm screwing up? Mm -hmm. Right then I feel embarrassed and I want out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is this a perspective you want to take into competition? It's not for me, no. Okay, then no. We can shop around and we can find a perspective that's going to work for you. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
you're happy to give money to the competition. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want to try the pizza? Come on. I love pizza. means to get benched. You know, what if they had a healthy perspective to sit out again and actually knew what that meant? Any other ideas? Quiet bunch. Talked about pressure <coughs> earlier with we. Yeah. Yeah, what if we help them understand <coughs> how they think about pressure and how they can shift <coughs> Going into championship, it's the big weekend. It would be great if they all had a perspective that they could cling to, to keep them present and in the game. Yeah. So those are the game uh, topics, that you, but it's also about life, exams, parents, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, party on Friday night, but they have practice Saturday morning. And they're kind of bummed out. You can switch their perspective. Mm -hmm. you know? And what if, <laughs> what if you could give them a perspective that they could hold on to for life, that they could always come back to as their grounding perspective when things are a little sticky or not quite going as well as planned? You can give that to them. You're their coach. So let me give you an example of how I, I use this in my own life. We did this big hike this summer with my entire family. We hiked the Chilkoot Pass in Alaska. So we've been hiking for three days. We hike, we are camping that third night. It is raining. We have been tired and hungry and wet for a few days and we have to stomach the next day. And it is raining. And the ranger sits us down 
and give, puts the fear of God in us. And I walk into my tent that night, and I'm just like, I don't even think I can do this. I don't even think I can do this. <laughs> and I am, um, I'm scrambling to uh, be this uh, role model for my kids and to be able to enjoy this once in a lifetime experience. So I'm like, I gotta shift. I gotta shift my perspective on this. What can I do? I hear this waterfall. I'm like, okay, a waterfall. What's a waterfall perspective? And I'm like, okay, the momentum of the waterfall is going forward. It's got all this support with it. There is no turning back. And, uh, but it's got all this support so that it can actually be uh, really beautiful and fun. So I started to grab a hold of that idea that there is no going back. There is only going forward. And I can rise to that occasion that I'm really powerful and I can allow that power to drive my momentum forward. I can lean into my family. And that day of summoning was the best day of our hike. And it is like a highlight for our family. We got to the top of the summit and I just swelled with pride at myself and my family. So you can use this to shift yourself in those essential situations without the weight. It's a life skill. Yep. Okay, any questions, comments? No? Okay. So skill number two. Skill number two. Boundaries. Okay, so I have a timer. That's what I'm always checking. <laughs> Coaches, right? We hold time. <laughs> so I'm holding time for you guys. Uh, so skill number two is boundaries. So boundaries was a game changer for my team. Um, I walked into a team being told there are difficult parents in the room. So good luck, Linda. And so, you know, I've had those experiences in the past that I'm bringing with me. So I thought, what am I going to do that I'm going to establish some really safe team culture? So I use boundaries. Boundaries, um, the way Brene Brown, great author, you guys should be reading her, defines boundaries is simply what's okay and what's not okay. Really e easy language for everybody to understand. So I walked into my parent meeting with two boundaries that I <coughs> presented and laid out for the parents. The first boundary that I brought was, it's okay to be an effective leader on the okay side. It's not okay to hijack on the, all the power. So that was me as a leader going first. I'm bringing boundaries on the team, but I'm not laying them down like laws. I'm showing them I'm not coming in as a dictator, but I'm establishing with my first boundary, I'm an effective leader. That's my intention here. I intend to lead this team. A little bit marking my territory, right? A little bit saying, hey guys, I got this to my parents. And I'm also saying, it's okay, it's safe. I'm going to be an effective leader. I'm not going to hijack all the power. There's room for your voice in the room. And I'm going to be the kind of leader that inspires your daughters, that helps them draw the leader out of themselves, right? I'm going to build those girls up. I'm not going to diminish them. So like, relax, parents. Trust me. I got this. We're on the same team. Works really, really well. So the second boundary that I brought in, I said the words that we all want to say. I was saying it's not okay to talk about me. <laughs> but I introduced it in a way that I gave the parents room to work with me while still saying what I wanted to say and starting to lay in those boundaries of what our team is going to look like. So I said to them, I'm like, parents, I've got my second boundary, but I need help with the language. So you guys know these kids, you can help me. You guys know your daughters better than I do. So I tell them, parents, my second boundary is, it's okay to hold a different opinion. It's not okay to slander. Right? I'm like, parents, it's not okay to talk about me. It's not okay for me to talk about your kids. 
not okay for our athletic director to be talking about you guys. We're going to establish this as a boundary. So we use that word slander to allow the parents to play around with it in a really way they weren't defensive about it. Because I'm saying, right, I have this word slander, but I know slander is not going to work, guys. I need you to give me language. So we just brainstormed it with the parents. So, Tony, give me another word for slander. Gossip, how about that? <laughs> okay, so then that's all I did. I, like, the parents would give me words and I wrote them down. And then I'm like, thank you parents, that's so awesome. And I took these boundaries and all those words that the parents had given me and I presented it to the team. We brainstormed through it with the team and the girls came back with the language of, it's okay to hold a different opinion, it's not okay to be the play. And that actually became really essential in our team culture because then, as soon as we would see a girl maybe not speaking respectfully about a teammate or about themselves, right? A few little words, it's not okay to be the play, and they would know immediately. We don't talk like that in this gym. That's not how we treat each other. Um, and then I gave the parents room. I just asked them throughout that idea, is there a boundary that you want to have, right? I'm circling back to I'm going to be an effective leader, but I'm not going to be here. I'm sharing my power. Uh, so they, just through a bunch of discussion, came back to me with the idea that they want the girls to be a team. They don't want them to feel like when the goings get tough, they get to quit and they only get to do what they want to do. They wanted those girls to be wholehearted for the whole season. So I took their, what they're saying and I uh, formed it into, these, into this boundary. It's essential to be a team. It's not okay to opt out. So again, huge in our team culture, right? If we're in a game and I look back and I've got four players standing at the end of my bench cheering and I got one sitting, all I've got to say is, not okay to opt out. I got somebody in a drill, not really working, hanging around in the back, I'm like, hey, not okay to opt out. And they know immediately what's expected of them and it takes away the whole taking it personally, right? We just know that's expected. They're in the not okay side. They got to make a shift or else we got to talk about it. <clears throat> Anything to add to that, Leah? Yeah, what I love about it is it just becomes a common language used within the team that everybody has permission to use. So we've all been the parents, or we have heard of the parents sitting in the stands, listening to other people talk not very nicely about other players, or maybe about the coach, or, or something. This gives them the permission to say, that's not cool. You agreed to the boundaries you can stop. And it takes the personal sting out of it, and it gives them the power. It gives your team the power to keep it within the boundaries and bring it back. Yeah. So yeah, and everybody knows the same words. So there's none of the awkward, oh, they keep doing it, but I don't know what to say. You know what to say. You've already written it in your boundaries. Yeah, it's a great tool, made our team really a safe place. It made our culture safe. Kept us all uh, bought in. Great language taking home. Yes. So closing. Any questions about boundaries? Comments? Okay. okay. Uh, what's your suggestion on policing that if you don't get parents buying on that type of stuff? Well, as a coach, you can have them buy in. Say, okay, you don't like this wording, what wording do you like? What wording do you have? Because it's for their protection as well. It's not just for the coach and the athlete, it's for the other parents as well. Because if one person is speaking poorly about someone, they're probably speaking poorly about everyone and some. And everybody slips up, and it's okay. And so this just brings them back into the fold. So work on that. And if you get a 90% do you have anything to add to that? No, I think that's excellent. Uh, but it also gives you language and an expectation about uh, how to address it. Mm -hmm. 
or, or a starting point, right? A launching pad for that discussion. Yeah, it's been put on the table, so therefore they, there's an understanding that it's not going to be accepted. One of the things that I find is that, uh, you know, if you have the same group of athletes, year after year, you build that culture and it's sort of, but, you know, sometimes you'll have 20% and then 80% of the news are trying to continue to build that culture. You know, sometimes, Absolutely, but if you have 80% buy-in, they can, they have, they now have the language that is understood by everyone. Everybody's speaking the exact same language to say to them, "That's not cool. Come back into the boundary." You know, yes, some people are still going to continue, but this is a good starting point. I was just going to say it's an add-on. That means if you are a coach, you didn't establish that at the beginning, and let's say things are falling off the wagon or some negative going on, how would you suggest that for somebody who, say, happens to the season and they're feeling that kind of pressure from parents or players, how would you address it if you didn't think it at the beginning? We have a great phrase in coaching that we always say, up until now. So you get to step over the threshold and say, as of now, this is our language for our team. And I would really like you to co-create with me a language that everybody will understand and is comfortable using. Anytime, anytime, yeah. I think what I do is I would start the same process, right? I would uh, think about the boundaries that I wanted to have. I would call a parent meeting and I would sit down with the parents and say, I got some concerns, this is what I'm seeing and feeling and I want to keep these kids safe. And this is how I think I can do it. Help me with the language. Help me find some words that are going to establish these boundaries that we can keep these girls safe. Or boys or whatever, you know? That's what the parents are there for, is those kids, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a good way to get them to buy in. And then I just walk through the process the same way so that all your stakeholders are on that same page. And then just, um, so you've acknowledged it, you've called it out, right, which doesn't always happen. Lots of stuff just gets swept under, and you just want to make it through the season, right? And then get rid of that troubled parent or whatever it is. But when you actually name it, right, that can be powerful in and of itself. Yeah, and then once it's on the table, uh, simple language to keep all your stakeholders united on that. Yeah, and it takes the power away from the so-called bad apples and gives it back to the people who are really there because they want to be there and they're enjoying it. So take the power back. Okay. Something I found really uh, powerful. One of my um, one of my administrators did it on a club team I was on. I mean, like I so appreciate good administration protecting coaches. Uh, there was a situation. And they just said, on in a club situation, right? So there's money. They said, oh my gosh, you're not happy? We're so sorry that you, the program isn't what you wanted. So here, we'll write you a check. You're free to go, thank you. And uh, oh my gosh, all of a sudden things were not that bad. <laughs> I don't think you can do that to a parent in the middle of the season. <laughs> no, that's what they did. Oh, administration, though, not really? as a coach, but administration oh. stepped in and just said, we understand it's not a match. That happens. We're going to refund half your money. Thank you for your time. Wow. That's, uh, that's a good boundary. Yeah. That's a good boundary. That's a good administration. Yes. 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 Okay. Any more questions on perspectives or boundaries, topics that you might want to consider? Okay, sum it up. Okay, so we called it coaching to the big, bigger picture. Two different uh, tools that you put in your pocket. Perspective, <coughs> helping those kids understand that they have a perspective, what that is, helping them explore that and then giving them the powerful tool that actually they can share, right? We can't always change our circumstances or that topic, but we can change how we're approaching it, the lens through which we're seeing it. That's our choice. That's powerful, in and out of the gym. And boundaries, giving you 
simple, unified language to really get intentional about getting your team, getting your stakeholders on the same page. Um, but even above and beyond that, it's knowing what you want to create. Taking the time to decide what you want to create with that team, culture-wise, and actually laying it out. And then those tools, right, that again, right, we have healthy personal boundaries. How, how powerful would that be in your own life? So great tools in the gym, out of the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay.